If you struggle with talking to people or you have social anxiety or you just want to make new friends and improve your relationships, the best book you will ever read on all of that is How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. In this video, I'm going to be going over a section in this book called The Six Ways to Make People Like You. And these principles can be instantly applied to your life. The reason that they are valuable is because you can go right away and use these principles with anybody you meet or anybody you already know. Principle number one become genuinely interested in other people. You can make more friends in two months by becoming interested in people than you can in two years by trying to get people interested in you. And the reason for that is kind of obvious. It's that every single person, every human out there, you watching this video, we are all more interested in ourselves than other people. What's going on in our lives, the things that we're doing. We don't really care about what other people are doing in comparison to our life. So it makes sense that when you become interested in other people, when you start to ask questions and want to know what's going on in another person's life, they're going to be way more interested in you because it shows that you care to listen to their stories about what they know and the things that they're doing. You are taking interest in the things that they are most interested in and care about the most. When was the last time someone called you and you greeted them in a way that made them know that you were interested in speaking to them? that you are happy to hear from them. The next time you speak to someone, intentionally show the other person that you actually want to hear from them, that you are happy to speak with them and you're interested in what they're doing. Principle number two, smile. Actions speak louder than words. And a smile says, I like you, you make me happy, I'm glad to see you. You can probably remember many times where you weren't really having a good day or you felt unhappy and you saw one of those people that just makes you smile, that makes you happy and you can't help but smile. A smile is so simple and so easy, but it can make someone else's day so much better. You could literally give that piece of happiness to someone else, every single person you meet just by smiling. And you might be thinking, okay, well, it doesn't make sense for me to be happy all the time, always smiling, always being optimistic and making other people's day better. But you've probably heard this before and there's literally been studies that have shown if you just smile on your own, no one else is around, you will become happier. Even though you might have been unhappy, when you act as if you already were happy, it makes you happier. There are many times where I don't want to speak with people. Like sometimes at the gym, I'm having a bad day, I'm tired, I just want to get my workout over with, and I see other people that I know at the gym. And I could just kind of ignore them, go about my workout, but when I go and talk to them and really try to have a good conversation with them, you can't help but start to smile, to start to feel better. Because the truth is, you must have a good time at meeting people if you expect them to have a good time meeting you. Principle number three, remember people's names. The average person is more interested in his or her own name than in all the other names on earth put together. We've all been in this situation before where we have forgotten someone's name that we should remember. And they maybe even remember your name, but you can't seem to remember theirs. And it's one of the most awkward things to have to ask that person, oh, oh sorry, what's your name again? Because you know that you should remember their name, that you've met them before, they've introduced themselves to you. But for some reason, you just didn't store their name in your memory. This principle, just like the second one about smiling is super simple. It doesn't take that much to remember someone's name, but for some reason, we forget a lot of people's names. A name is someone else's unique identity. It's the thing that sets them apart from others, and when you forget someone's name, it's signaling to them that you didn't care enough to remember them or to remember their unique identity. So the other way around, it would make the person feel important if you actually remembered who they were, you remembered their unique identity. So when you meet someone and they introduce themselves to you, try to use their name maybe even multiple times during that conversation. And then after the conversation is over, try to connect the name with certain characteristics of that person, what they look like and maybe some things that you learned about them in the conversation. And if you wanna go even further than that, you can write their name down multiple times on a piece of paper so that you ingrain it in your memory or maybe even on the notes app in your phone. So remember people's names because when you do, it shows other people that you cared enough to remember them as a person. Principle number four, be a good listener, encourage others to talk about themselves. If you aspire to be a good conversationalist, be an attentive listener. To be interesting, be interested. Ask questions that other persons will enjoy answering. Encourage them to talk about themselves and their accomplishments. It is super easy to talk only about ourselves. And the reason for that is, like I stated earlier, we really only care about ourselves. In comparison to someone else's life, ours is so much more important to us. But at the same time, while we do want to talk about ourselves, while everyone is more interested in themselves as an individual, they also crave someone to listen to them, to have active listening presence from someone else. Think about how many times you literally 
are not present and don't pay attention at all to what the things your family has to say, how you are distracted and literally just give an automated response. Probably every single day, my mom asks me, how was your day at school? And my response like 99% of the time is just good. I'm not actually listening or answering the question. I'm just giving an automated response. When you're distracted, what you're telling the other person is, I literally could care less about what you have to say. But a lot of the time, all people really want is just to be listened to. And I know people who only talk about themselves and talking to those type of people, that is unbearable. I'm not saying that you have to constantly actively listen to all those types of people. This is most important when it's applied to your family, the people that you're closest to. Because the funny thing is, you're actually more likely to listen attentively to a stranger than you are to your own family. We're around our family all the time, so we don't really pay as much attention to what they have to say. And what you've probably noticed so far is that all of these principles have everything to do with other people and not much to do with yourself. Because leveling up socially, making more friends, making deeper relationships, it's all about making it about other people and not about you. Because when you give away your interest, when you give your presence to other people, other people can't help but open up to you and want to talk to you and want to be your friend. You can learn so much from other people. You can create connections, make more friends. You can receive kindness and warmth if you were to just listen more than you speak. To stop thinking about what you are going to say next, and actually hear the words that are coming out of someone else's mouth. When you ask questions about other people and when you talk in a way where they know you are listening, that person can't help but want to talk to you because they know that you value what they have to say no matter what. Principle number five, talk in terms of other person's interests. When you do this, the other person will relish talking to you, but you as well will receive a reward, the enlargement of your life each time you speak to someone. If someone I had just met started talking to me about the gym and YouTube and self-improvement, I could talk to them for hours. We all have those things that we like, that we take interest in and think are important. And again, since we care more about those things and what's going on in our lives, we would rather talk about those interests, the ones that we care about. But I found that most of the time, the moments where people really open up to you, where you have a much deeper conversation with someone is when you actually talk in the terms of another person's interests. If you're struggling to get above that baseline conversation with someone, try to find out what they are passionate about, what they enjoy, and talk about that. Because you're gonna get so much more out of that than the basic, oh, hey, how you doing? Yep, nice to meet you. Mm-hmm. All right, see you later, man. This principle is almost directly tied to being interested in other people because when you take interest in other people, you're gonna wanna talk about what they care about. And if you can't get yourself to do that, and if you only wanna speak about what you care about, then you're never gonna have those conversations that actually go deeper, where you get more out of a person and understand where their passion lies, what they truly care about. And those types of conversations where you can go on for hours with someone about something that they truly care about, because I know you could probably go hours and hours talking about something that you care about. Those type of conversations are so much more valuable than the basic conversation that you have with most people you know. Principle number six, make the other person feel important and do it sincerely. Carnegie begins this section talking about how one day he was waiting outside a post office. And as he looked inside, he noticed that the clerk looked particularly bored. So he thought to himself, what can I do to make this man's day better? What sort of genuine appreciation can I give him? And the thought instantly popped into his head. And so as he walked up to the front of the line, he said to the man, I wish I had your head of hair. And almost surprised, the man looks up and a smile starts to radiate from his face. After having a short conversation with him, the last thing the man said was, Many people have admired my hair. Carnegie told this exact story another time in public, and afterwards, a man came up and asked him, what did you want to get out of him? Shortly after this, Carnegie writes, if we are so contemptibly selfish that we can't radiate a little happiness and pass on a bit of honest appreciation without trying to get something out of the other person in return, if our souls are no bigger than sour crab apples, we shall meet with the failure we so richly deserve. This is probably one of the best chapters out of the entire book, and honestly, one of the best chapters I've ever read. I would say that this is sort of the theme of the book, that in almost every situation, the way to make somebody else like you, to deepen your relationships, to make new friends, is to just make the other person feel important. If you look back at every other principle that I just went through, each of them does exactly this. They make somebody feel important. When you remember someone's name, when you listen attentively to someone 
someone else. When you smile at someone, that person knows that you are happy to see them, that you want to speak with them, and that you think they are important and what they have to say is important. If there's one thing that you take away from this video, I want it to be that the one single best way to make people like you, to create better relationships, to get better at talking to people, the one best way to do it is to make other people feel important and to do it genuinely and sincerely. I remember a while back when I had first started gratitude journaling, I thought about how I had almost never thanked my dad for how hard he'd worked, for all the work he's put in to keep my family afloat. I never had once thanked him for the work he's put in over the years, over the decades that he's been working. I had sort of been taking it for granted that all the money we had, all the things we could buy, we had that because of him. And I wrote a quick message to him about how I was grateful for all the work he had put in for our family, how I genuinely appreciated him because I did. I appreciated what he had done for all of these years. And the next day, he told me how much that message meant to him. It was extremely small, it was genuine, and it probably only took me seven minutes to write, but the feeling it created for me and my dad, that is something that can last forever. When you show other people genuine appreciation, when you show them that you think they're important, there's almost a 0% chance that they won't like you. So there you go, there are six principles that you can instantly apply to your life. This book is meant to be a guidebook. So every time you learn something new, go and use it on someone. Go show someone genuine appreciation. Go make someone else feel important. Give someone a smile. It could be your family. It could be a stranger on the street. But make sure that you are applying these things every single day. So eventually these things just become a habit. And you become that guy that everyone knows, that everyone likes. And something I want to say is that you have to take action for any of this to work. If you watch this entire video, this is the time to take action. Go tell your mom that you love her, that you care about how much she's done for you. The next time you're out with your friends, try to actually listen to what they have to say and become genuinely interested in their lives. And it doesn't matter if your conversations are awkward. If you introduce yourself to someone on the street and the conversation goes not as you wanted it. If you try to use one of these principles and the outcome isn't what you expected, it literally doesn't matter. I keep saying this, but everyone cares more about themselves than they do other people. And everyone remembers their embarrassing moments. Everyone remembers what they do more than everyone else. You probably can't even remember a time where somebody else did something embarrassing or out of pocket. So literally, if no one else cares and no one else is going to remember, there is no point in not taking action and not using these principles. Never stop improving. You'll be grateful for it later.